Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rituraj, and I am going to be presenting this wonderful seminar on Grafana. We're going to talk about DevOps. We're going to talk about very interesting things on Grafana as a monitoring tool. We're going to have a have. We're going to have a look at Grafana as a monitoring tool. Before I actually jump down to what Grafana is, what are the features? Let's quickly look at the agenda for this session. Yeah, we're going to have a look at continuous monitoring in DevOps. I will introduce to Grafana as a monitoring tool, right? Getting started with Grafana, Grafana dashboard and variables. And if possible, we will look at some portion of hands-on on Grafana, right? Perfect. As, as informed earlier, for all your training certification needs, Edureka is the on-site and mostly sought after platform. Let's begin. Continuous monitoring in DevOps, right? So there are, there are, there are these phases in a DevOps lifecycle. There are various phases like continuous, right? You have continuous development, you have continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous deployment, and continuous monitoring that constitute the DevOps lifecycle. This is where the birth of Grafana really happened. So we'll, we'll have to discuss about, about this. And as of now, continuous development is simply a phase that involves planning and coding of the software. The, the, I mean, the vision of the project is usually decided during the planning phase. That's what continuous development is, right? It is a it is an integral part of, I mean, all of these phases are an integral part of the DevOps life cycle. The entire life cycle is broken down into these phases, and this this bits and pieces is what we call as a DevOps life cycle. Correct. So continuous development is basically that phase where the the coding, I mean, I mean the, 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 the planning happens, isn't it? Continuous development, followed by continuous integration, which is the most core important piece, continuous testing, continuous deployment, and continuous monitoring where we will look at Grafana in detail. Yeah, now continuous development, if I have to talk about before we touch upon monitoring, is that is simply a phase that involves planning and coding of the software and the vision of the project is usually decided during the planning phase, right? And the developers begin developing the code for the application. This is where it is. Now, there are no DevOps tools that are required for the planning, but yes, there are tools for maintaining the code. Like you have, you have Git, you have GitHub, right? All of these tools are, are made available to you. They are part of the DevOps lifecycle. They're part of the DevOps life cycle, right? And on the other hand, continuous integration is the stage, which is the heart of the entire DevOps life cycle. Heart. So you, you plan it, you make use of version control systems like Git and GitHub, and you followed by which you have continuous integration, which is the heart, right? Which is the main main phase of your DevOps life cycle, right? It is basically a software development practice in which developers require to commit changes to the source code more frequently, right? Now, this may be on a daily or a weekly basis, but every commit that is built 
will allow you to detect problems if they are present in the code right so you have you have these you have these developers here they are using tools in the continuous integration phase they are committing changes on a daily on a daily weekly or sometimes even on an hourly basis sometimes even on an hourly basis yeah and if if the problems occur not only i mean what what basically happens is all these changes are committed on a continuous basis so remember that it can be on a daily weekly hourly it doesn't matter yeah so you really don't have tools for continuous development which we understand which we just saw you make use of git and github right you have tools in the continuous integration right where the coders commit changes yeah and basically this is the practice where developers require to commit changes to the source code more frequently yeah okay but every commit that is built will allow you to detect problems if they are present in the code correct right? not this not only involves compilation but it also includes code review unit testing integration testing packaging etc and etc now moving on to the third phase that's continuous testing of the life cycle we have continuous testing now this is the stage where developers where the you know where the developed software is continuously tested yeah is continuously tested for bugs for issues and for continuous testing automation testing tools are used automation testing tools are used like selenium you no know, test ng j unit are some of the most commonly tools used in continuous testing phase yeah to understand more about it what do these tools really do they allow quality assurances to test multiple code bases thoroughly in parallel to ensure that there are no flaws in the functionality right there are no flaws in the functionality that's what continuous testing is what about what about yeah now moving on to the next phase that is we have continuous deployment now this is a stage where the code is deployed to the production servers it is it is really important to ensure that the code is correctly deployed on all the servers because there has to be no sort of errors in real time no sort of errors we cannot afford at this point of time having passed the continuous testing phase right that is exactly why everyone in devops practices continuous deployment and finally we have continuous monitoring very crucial stage very crucial stage of the cycle where you continuously monitor the performance of your application finally this is this is i feel this is the most important phase i mean you can go ahead you can plan it out you can integrate it you can test it you can deploy it on the other hand this is the phase where your application your infra everything needs to be monitored isn't it i mean you can deploy it but at the same time within an hour time if you have real issues if you do not bring in monitoring it doesn't make sense there it doesn't make sense there isn't it so vital information about the use of the software is recorded here and this information is eventually processed to recognize the proper functionality of the application the system errors you know such as low memory server not reachable etc etc are resolved only in this continuous monitoring phase low cpu usage you have this alerting system right low bandwidth network issues all of these get sorted out in the continuous monitoring phase 
all of these. So you see the, the complete life cycle is made in such a way that it is fully automated. You make use of tools, you make use of software, less human intervention, the code gets corrected there and there itself. The commits are pushed into the continuous integration tools, they are deployed, so on and so forth. The continuous life cycle moves on. That is what is the level, that is where the DevOps life cycle plays a role. Yeah. Now, so we understand you no know, monitoring gets you the vital information about the use of software because this is eventually processed to recognize the proper functionality of the application, the system errors, all of these issues, right, are resolved in this phase. That is what continuous monitoring phase is. Also, the root cause of any issue is determined in this phase. So what it really does is it maintains the security and the availability of the services. Also, if there are any network issues, they, those are also resolved in this phase. Basically helps us automatically fix the problems as soon as they are detected. Now, these five DevOps stages that we just discussed are carried out on loop continuously, as I said, till you achieve the desired product quality. Therefore, almost most of the major, major software companies, development companies have shifted to DevOps for building the products. Now, this is where Grafana comes into picture. It is basically a continuous monitoring tool that will help you to visualize your real-time data in an application. So you can visualize your data and you can understand how it's working in real time. So before we move on, to before we move on, let us understand why do we need continuous monitoring in the first place? Yeah, why do we need continuous monitoring in the first place? Okay, there are four major reasons as to why we need to practice continuous monitoring. The first and obvious reason is it allows us to have better network visibility, transparency. Continuous monitoring offers DevOps teams clarity on the state of the infrastructure by automatically collecting and analyzing the data. That is to reflect possible outages, right? And important trends. It also facilitates rapid responses. It also facilitates rapid responses, which is the primary aspect of continuous monitoring. Because, I mean, having deployed and we are into a phase where uh, it's all automated. The responses have to be fast enough. There's no point if there's a if there's a pro, if, if there's a problem in the code, and it gets notified after after say few days or few weeks. It doesn't get justified here, right? That's the primary aspect of continuous monitoring, right? Implementing an alert system that immediately notifies the right people the minute the incident emerges. So this is this basically enables timely response to security threats or functional stop gaps and therefore minimizing damages, eventually allowing faster restoration of the system to optimal operational levels. The third reason is it minimizes the system downtime. Now, Consistent system monitoring and quick necessary alerts help maintain system uptime by raising the alarm when there is a service outage or any application performance issues. The fourth reason is it helps in assisting with healthy business performance reduction in system downtime. Also, obviously, minimizing the negative impact on the customer experience, thereby safeguarding the organization against losses in revenue or, of course, credibility. Continuous monitoring tools can be used to track user reactions to software updates, you know, which is, which is useful in solid teams like, you know, development team quality assurance, sales marketing, etc. Yeah, now, that, I mean, that is one as one another aspect of Grafana. 
that is one more aspect where you gather you we we all know data is the new oil isn't it the more data you collect the more visualizations the more uh, the it, it can help your business more and more yeah so now that we know why we need continuous monitoring let's understand what is continuous monitoring what is continuous monitoring continuous monitoring also sometimes is also sometimes referred to as continuous control monitoring which is an automated process by which devops or any other personnel can observe detect compliance issues and security threats during each phase of the devops pipeline let me repeat this it is an automated process by which one can observe and detect compliance issues and security threats during each phase of the pipeline outside devops the processes may be expanded to do the same for any segment whether it's it infrastructure in question also it basically helps teams or organizations monitor detect study key relevant metrics and find ways to resolve the said issues in real time as we've already seen in our previous slides monitoring comes in the end of the devops pipeline now once the software is released into production continuous monitoring will notify developers quality assurance teams in the event of specific issues arising in production environment so what does continuous monitoring really help it basically assists the organizations devops teams in particular with procuring real time data from public and hybrid environments this is especially useful in implementing and fortifying various security measures incident response threat assessments computers and databases for root cause analysis it also helps provide general feedback on the overall health of the setup including offsite networks and deployed software applications now moving on let us check on the continuous monitoring tools in devops right okay so we are looking at what what kind of tools are available in the market today yeah having talked about the importance having talked about what continuous monitoring is let's look at continuous monitoring tools in devops yeah now there are several devops tools for monitoring the ecosystem obviously which helps both the development and operation teams to i mean that is the work effectively together the first one the first one in the monitoring tool it should come to us as no surprise we are starting a discussion of devops tools with a focus on on the said that we know that what is monitoring tools right so a good monitoring platform lets you monitor infrastructure and application performance whether on prem or in the cloud or across containerized environments so you have a complete visibility into every system all the time some of the tools are sensui navois prometheus right now sensui is sensui is flexible and scalable telemetry and service help checking solution for monitoring servers containers container services application functions and connected devices prometheus on the other hand relies on the pull method to collect information with the built in database navois is legacy monitoring tool that introduced monitoring practices to a generation of operators the next one on the list is we have devops configuration tools devops devops configuration management tools now configuration management tools allow you to automate the provisioning and deployment of systems in and enforce desired configurations and remediate configuration drift by modeling your infrastructure as code you can apply software delivery practices like version control automated testing and continuous delivery to infrastructure and applications of course some of the tools are ansible chef puppet 
Ansible is written in Python, which is agent lens, of course, very popular, utilizes imperative approach. Chef, on the other hand, is written in Ruby, which also relies on imperative configuration approach. Puppet, on the other hand, relies on a declarative configuration management approach using a domain specific language and on an Asian master architecture. Moving on, we have DevOps alerting tools, right? Now, these provide both actionable and informational system alerts and can be customized to fit the complexities of the system. Example, the alerting system needs to be sensitive enough to cover an outage, but not so sensitive that you're catching frequent and unnecessary problems, you know, that users are really not going to see. There are these some alerting tools like page duty, service now, Slack, pager duty. Yeah, pager duty is an on call management system with add ons for analytics events, intelligence, and automated incident response. Service now, on the other hand, utilizes automated workflows for ITSM as well as customer service, business processes. And Slack, on the other hand, lets you consolidate alerts into the same platform you use for group chats and collaboration, right? Okay. Next on the list, we have metric storage. Metric storage, right? So once you've automated configuration management, alerting and monitoring, you'll have a whole lot of data at your disposable to learn from. Whole lot of data. Now, the challenge is to how do you securely store and analyze it? You obviously need a storage system that lets you aggregate and learn from system capacity, user behavior, user behavior service levels, security risks, and much more. This is exactly where metric storage comes into the picture. The different types are influx, influx DB, you know, some, uh, Splunk. Influx DB is simply a time series database that's suited for long term storage. Splunk, very popular, uses a search engine database model to store and query data. AWS, on the other hand, supports a wide variety range of storage purposes, including relational non-relational databases, right? A data warehouse for analytics, a time series database, a ledger database to store transactions and much more. So in this session, along with Grafana, we will also learn how to configure InfluxDB to get real-time data. Yeah, so we will try and do that. Moving on to the last type of continuous monitoring tools in DevOps, we have visualization tools. Now, a visualization tool might be considered essence of your DevOps dual chain for monitoring. You get basically combine all of your data here and finally visualize, visualize it. That is display it on a customizable dashboard. What really visualization tools do is they provide context and meaning that allow you to track changes and improvements over time. They also give management a real-time view that helps guide strategic decisions. Customization options makes it easy for team members to design and share their own dashboards. Grafana can be used on top of a variety of different data stores, including Graphite InuxDB, Elasticsearch, and now that we know Grafana is a visualization, visualization DevOps tools. Let's move on to the next part of the session. Yeah? Let's move on to the next part of the session. Let's understand what Grafana is. Introduction to Grafana. So, first let us understand what is Grafana in the first place. So it's a multi-platform, open source, analytics, and interactive visualization web application it basically provides charts, graphs, and alerts for the web when connected to supported data sources. It is expandable through a plugin system, allows you to query, visualize alerts, and 
understand your metrics no matter where they are stored you create explore and share dashboards with your teams foster a data driven culture yeah it i mean it has become the world's most popular technology which is used to compose observability dashboards within with everything from prometheus and graphite metrics to logs and application data to power plants and beehives right let's check out some of the features of grafana plethora grafana has a plethora of visualization options to help you understand your data very very beautifully yeah basically the power to represent it in visualization format right right from maps to historic histograms you know geo maps it has a plethora of visualization options basically help you understand your data beautifully beautifully and of course the second feature is alerts right so seamlessly define alerts where it makes sense yeah define the alerts and while you are in the data define thresholds visually and get notified via slack page duty and much more you can also unify in grafana brings brings your data together to get better context to get better context yeah mix mix them together in the same dashboard mix them together in the same dashboard now supports dozens of databases natively and the best part is that you can mix them together in the same dashboard right that is what makes it makes it completely and most least sought after monitoring tool yeah alex there was a slide there was okay let me let me answer this let me answer this. it's 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 coming up it's coming up here you go here you go so next it is completely open source grafana gives you various options it's completely open source and backed by a vibrant community use grafana on cloud or easily install it on any platform right on any platform next important feature is that grafana can extend and you can discover hundreds of dashboards and plugins in the official library of grafana because of the passion and the momentum of their community new ones are added almost every week i repeat this yeah every week so it i mean you you can you can discover hundreds of dashboards the plugins are readily available okay now the last feature of grafana is collaboration right you can bring everyone together and share data and dashboards across teams it basically empowers users and helps foster a data driven culture with all of this said na let's dive into the demo piece yeah i hope you are able to understand some features of grafana how it is i mean why it is so popular what role does it play in the in the entire devops life cycle right okay unfortunately what has happened is my grafana has just crashed some time back so i will not be able to show you the demo right now but i will definitely assist you how it is to be installed yeah so what i have basically done is it is i prepared some commands where i am running ubuntu on a as a virtual machine in my virtual box right so i am using a ubuntu 20.04 machine as in in virtual box right now right and i am using firefox in it right just to just to check up the configuration i'm using the terminal here and i tried setting up i tried setting up grafana here since it's all open source the the instructions are readily available on the net readily available within within few clicks i can set it up right and uh, the prerequisite for grafana is you will have to you have to set up you have to set up a engineering server so that you know you can you can test it out you can take help of visualizations and graphs right and 
Grafana as you can you can check up the port you can check up the port on which Grafana is running. Usually it is three thousand, right? So once once Grafana is installed, you can check it up by giving this command. At this point of time, Nginx was already installed, right? I somehow couldn't manage to install Grafana. I was trying to do that. It uh, I ran into some problems, which I will do so after this after this webinar. But otherwise, uh, if all goes well. You will see the dashboard here. You will see the admin control dashboard here. Let me show that to you. Let me show that to you. Yeah, here you go. So once you have installed and once you have set up Grafana on your system, right? You will be taken to this page. It will run on port 3000. Usually, usually it will run on 3000, right? You normally give admin as the username and admin as the password once you log in, before you log in rather, right? And then after you enter into the Grafana system, you will then be asked to configure the database, configure the dashboards, collect all the, all the related data, right? And you will be asked to configure the different types of dashboards accordingly right so first and foremost thing download it onto your system right if you're using it locally or you can use a cloud version as well if i have to show you the cloud version i also have i've also set it up yeah oh, i don't have it right now okay no problem so you can use a cloud version as well right uh, assuming that you are going to you are going to test it out in house, set it up on a, one of your VMs using VirtualBox. I typically make use of Ubuntu for all my trial applications, right? Set it up, set it up on port 3000. You will be taken to this login page. Login, login as the username will be typically admin. Password will be admin. Follow the set of instructions, right? And you will then then be guided to set up the database. It supports a variety of databases, right? And dashboards, correct? Okay. So these are the steps to download Grafana onto your system. Ensure that the service is up and running, right? Ensure you've started the service. Ensure that it is up and running. Ensure that it starts up after every reboot, right? Now, once that's done, you will be taken to the login page. Login as, and the, the URL for you to log in will be obviously localhost colon 3000. Localhost colon 3000. Username, of course, is admin. Password is also admin, right? Now, if you want a new password and you don't want it to be admin, just type in the new password and confirm it. And submit it, right? So you can you can also set that up accordingly. So once you've logged in, once you've logged in, it's going to be. I mean, it's very interesting because you got to you, you just got to pick up boxes. You can really play around, right, with these panels. You can view them, you can edit them, and most importantly, you can share them. Yeah, you can duplicate them, you can remove them. So all of these panels you can move around. Yeah. This is a very, very interesting feature. Once you've logged in, you can scroll down. You can also see the, the, the you can see the guides. You can see blogs. You can, you can get the latest updates, updates, right? That are changes that are occurring every day, right? List of dashboards on the left-hand side. You can edit them. You can share them. You can do whatever with it. So there's one dashboard that I had worked upon. That was a world map dashboard. And it basically, you know, so if you want to, if you want to return back to the homepage, you can, that, that there are links. It, it's, it's, a, it's a typical web-based web -based tool otherwise. Thank you all. Thank you all for having me here.